Welcome to Anime Love, a channel that all we do is give you anime suggestions and recommendations, top 5, 10, and even 20 lists, character analysis, and even some anime theories, and a lot more. My name's David, and I'll be your narrator. And before we start with today's video, I'll kindly ask you to, only if you've liked it, of course, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please feel free to do so. And so, let's roll the intro and start with today's video. Hello everybody, how's it going? Today we'll be looking at things from the bad guy's perspective. A perspective not many people consider an ad in the picture. They're just ready to make all these relegations and judgments that aren't even true, all just to satisfy their ego, just to prove their point of them being the epitome of justice or something like that. Do know that this list features some spoilers that so were giving you that spoiler alert. Since we don't want you thinking us a villain at the end of this video and you coming after us because we ruined a masterpiece for you. With that out of the way, let's dive into the video. Calling villains rotten to the very core and good for nothing is something that's considered being righteous, since your justice allows it. It's true that nobody notices your tears, your sorrows. Everyone's just there to point out your mistakes and tell them to the whole world. But have you ever looked at the world through their eyes? Have you ever thought about what they had to go through? Have you ever heard the things they heard, done the things they had to do? All that just in order to survive and see the light of another day. A lot of us people are more than ready to call them all sorts of things without paying any heed to how things have been for them, how tragic of a past they've had, or how time has been treating them for what seems like an eternity to them. When a child is born, he or she is the most beautiful soul present in this planet we call Earth. Everyone's born with the same heart, which at first has no idea what's right and what's wrong. But as we grow up, our experiences and interactions shape our hearts and mold our personalities into what we'll be transforming to in the near future that's about to come. As a kid, everyone's taught about doing good deeds, helping others, always being kind to their fellow human beings since that's the only way they can be a good human and be someone who's close to God. All kids are in this constant struggle to be better than others when it comes to kindness and whatnot, making sure they don't lose any opportunity to treat others the way they want to be treated themselves. But for some kids, that's not the case. Victims of a tragic past, having no one to call mom or dad, no place to go home to, no place to sleep peacefully. You begin to question if it's something you did wrong back at some point. At the same time, all these people around you treating you however they deem worthy, and you being the victim of all kinds of violence and abuse. That's a sure way to make you twisted and force you to grow up into a monster who wants nothing but destruction, to just tear apart any human who breathes. Everyone wants a hero, believe me. Everyone wants to be the one who assures the other person that there's no need to worry about anything and that the danger is no longer there to threaten them. But there are experiences you have, situations you come across, that make you hate heroes to the very core, wanting to wipe their name off the face of the planet Earth. A famous quote by Harvey Dent from the Batman series fits so well here, that being, you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Heroes are humans in the end as well. Every villain was once a hero. As a hero, you have to stare into the abyss time after time, absorb so much darkness to make sure the world ends up clean, even if you're the one who's at the receiving end, who has to take the toll of it all. That darkness is hard to keep all in yourself, shackling yourself in order to prevent the monster inside you from coming out and running out of control, ravishing the entire place however it deems worthy. Some people are consumed by it, flipping the switch in their heads, making them go at the same people they admired and wanted to be the very next second. Let's take a look at some anime character examples. Scar, the Isvalen who saw a civil war firsthand, his people dying one after another at the hands of an imposter made him see nothing else but one thing from that point onward. That being to hunt down any alchemist that he comes across. Alchemists, being revered and spoke highly of in the Full Metal Alchemist universe, are someone no one would ever want to hunt, since they're the ones responsible for maintaining peace and order in the country. But Scar had seen enough, and was ready to stain his hands with blood, as long as it allowed him to calm his anger and frustration, even if it was just for a bit. 
Itachi Uchiha, one of the strongest shinobis ever to live, had to make a choice that would determine the fate of dozens of people. He chose to take the name of the villain, the name of the rogue ninja, the name of the outcast to make sure his brother gets to see another day and is able to live a fulfilling and peaceful life, even if there's no guarantee whether he'll be able to see him again or not. Garu from One Punch Man, someone who came up with a sound logic as a kid when it came to villains and monsters, was beaten to a pulp and had all these ideas hammered into him by the other kids who were stronger than him, kids who had the upper hand in a fight. All that continued for a while and childhood experiences truly shape who you'll be in a couple of years to come. Now we know him as the hero hunter who just goes around and brings any hero he comes across to his knees begging for mercy as he beats him to a pulp. He knew that in the end the monster hunts, going after people because he's alone deep inside. He's sad deep down and he's just lost, wanting someone to come up to him and talk to him. That's all. Everyone knows about the pain from Naruto. You see how hard it was for that guy. How things have been in his life for him to come to this point to form a posse full of all kinds of ninjas wanting to just destroy anything that moves. This guy had it quite hard, I gotta say. Lelouch Lamperouge, a kid who was abandoned and ignored by his father his entire life, had no shelter to return to, had no place to call home despite being royalty. With the land he loved, the country he adored now being ruled by an entirely different nation, he knew he had to take matters into his own hands if he was to assure a better future for his sister, and had to show his father how he'd done wrong to him and his sister their entire lives. For that, he didn't care when it came to the number of lives he'd be taking, for it was all for a righteous cause, which was there in his head and prevented him from staying calm or even going to sleep since day one. Stain, the hero killer from My Hero Academia, is just disturbed by how the society is full of these imposters who call themselves heroes, yet don't have the backbone to hold the weight the world comes hand in hand with. Out there to test the resolve and perseverance of all people wearing capes, he stays true to his ideals. The most notable of which is that people without faith or resolve would be weeded out and discarded in the trash for sure in the long run. That's it, bringing the old glorious standards of heroes back into the society. This guy will shed as much blood as it takes to make sure the word hero is not taken lightly by anyone ever again. Angela Lagusa, having his parents killed in front of him just when he was a child, all because of a mafia deal that didn't go well. Can you even imagine how hard it would have been for that poor, innocent kid to see the blood that ran in his veins as well splatter all over the place, painting his walls and later on his whole house red? His younger sibling killed in front of him, and all he could do was hide in complete silence, making sure he doesn't make a sound since that would give away his hiding spot in no time. Revenge is something that makes you forget everything else, other than the event that made you blind on that very day it occurred. Everyone has the same values. Everyone has the same morals. Everyone's preached to almost the same. But the world makes some of us saviors, while others are transformed into monsters ready to blow the whole planet to smithereens. That's just how the world is. Every villain is just a broken hero, someone who held justice first and foremost in the past, but had to see things or come across some events that made him lose trust in heroes and forced him to hunt them down for the eternity that's about to come. That's the underlying truth that's been here since day one, here in this world making new villains pop up in the picture. In my opinion, the villain has had it way rougher than the hero. You know, when you work hard for something, pour your heart into it and risk your life for the sake of others, you're sure to get rewarded in the end, along with being revered as a legend and the best human alive here on this planet Earth. All those accolades surely makes you forget any kind of tough situation that came your way, making a completely reset version of you come out of the calamity that you just dived into. But with villains, there is no such thing. Their lives are a constant struggle, their eyes being blinded by vengeance, clouded by revenge, since their past is something that would just never leave them alone, even if they wait an eternity for it to happen. Give time some time just doesn't cut it in this case. Remember, we're all the same on the inside. Everyone wants to be the hand that gives, the hand that calms, the hand that wipes those tears that roll down people's cheeks. But along the way, that very hand becomes the one that takes, the one that spreads qualms, the one that makes sure you run out of tears to cry. 
Don't badmouth villains. You don't know what they've gone through. Not everyone is fortunate enough to get a sick flashback like Pain or Itachi. But I'm pretty sure deep down, everyone's the same. Every other mind popping up with the same question over and over again. Why me? What did I do wrong? Does God not love me? Am I not blessed? Am I not his son? Every villain was a hero once, but the world is a place that doesn't value kindness and justice most of the time. All right, guys, that's all for today. Whew. Really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you already know what to do. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.